Brad, for the final time in 2023, the Super Late Model Series roars to life. We've had five amazing races so far, and I know today's going to be no different. You're right, Jesse. Uh, 26 of the best of the Maritimes lined up here at Petty Speedway this afternoon. And every other race, we haven't known until the last couple of laps who was going to win. The exception was Gosby got a little bit of a lead over in Prince Edward Island. But the second, the first time we were there, Jesse went green and white three times to decide the winner. Absolutely. That was a little bit controversial if you ask some of the fans of the grandstands. But you know what? That is what this series is about. It's, it's to talk about it. It's to show it. And we've seen a lot of our traffic online has come from the U.S. over in Europe as well. People are getting into super late model racing. They certainly are. And hats off to the young crew with all the... Uh, posts and everything they did on social media. It's a younger generation knows that stuff, Jesse, and a big following. Uh, we talked earlier, 500,000 plus people following the series. Uh, there was probably a lot of doubters when we started this, but there's no doubters out there now. This has been successful. No, absolutely not. The, uh, the 26 cars that we've got on track here today have come here for a purpose. They want to race. They want to run. They want to win. And Petty International Raceway is the place to do it. So, Jesse, you see the arrow over on the back stretch. That's the choose rule. Maybe people don't quite understand what it is and maybe touch base on what the choose rule is. We see it in NASCAR, but we got it here in our own province. Absolutely. The, uh, the choose rule comes to an, into effect on any caution outside of the initial start like this one. Drivers will have the opportunity to choose the outside or the inside for a restart. And, you know, if a bunch of drivers choose the outside, but you go to the inside, maybe you pick up, you know, five rows worth of positions, depending on how it works out. But uh, once you've made your choice, you cannot deviate from that. Uh, Going to be exciting to see here today. We've seen it all season long, but uh, today, uh, I keep saying it, today is going to be no different. Today is going to be a fantastic show, and we get to crown a champion today. We certainly do. And Gosby uh, here with a brand new race car. Pretty gutsy move on him. Uh, he's got a healthy points lead, but he's still got to get through this and avoid any accidents that he could get. Choose rules. Some guys early in the race, they'll take the inside lane. Later, as the rubber comes in the track, they'll go outside. This time by race fans as they make their way down the back stretch. We want to send these drivers off. Salute them with your hats, your hands, your programs, whatever you've got. Let's wave these drivers off. The cars and stars of the Super Late Model Series ready to do battle. 150 green flag laps presented by Old Fashioned Meat Market is up next. So what a treat for Kenny McKenzie Jr. Start on the pole. and He is from the area. He's the hometown boy. It's been an exciting day for him to get the start there. And how about the 23 of Somerville? Four motors this year, Jesse, in six races. Let's hope we don't see any more. Let's hope we see that car all the way to the finish. And I think Lonnie Somerville is going to have a bit of a chip on his shoulder. He's got something to prove here today. And we are about to find out. Lights out on the Fox City Auto Spa pace truck. Frank Jackson pulls it down into the infield. Kenny McKenzie Jr. and Lonnie Somerville for the final time this season. The old fashioned meat market, 150 is underway. And Somerville gets the early jump. He'll pull into the lead. McKenzie Jr. will sit back second. Here comes Darren McKinnon. He was fast in practice. Up on the outside looking to take that third spot away. Lap number one gonna belong to Lonnie Somerville. Darren McKinnon now going mount a charge on the outside of the 85 car. Ashton Tucker on the move. Works in around the 40 of Robbie McEwen. They'll race side by side just off the podium. So the outside lane is the early preference here. McKinnon goes by for the second spot. Ashton Tucker out there. McEwen wasting no time putting it up there. Looking to take away that four spot as it's single file up on the high banks. Ashton Tucker gets around the 85, down the back stretch, the 40 of Robbie McEwen looking to do the same. Kenny McKenzie Jr. having a bit of a tough time on this initial start, but I'm sure he is savoring this moment up front. His good pal Brady Creamer to the outside in the 10C. So a blanket over the top five up front, single foul. Kenny McKenzie Jr. sits in six. Now the big orange, Shadow Ferryden, looking to go by Junior on the back stretch. 
Uh, going to be followed through by Butcher. And uh, and the 10 car Snell is following through with O'Bleen. It's up on the high side. Devin Snell was another driver earlier today that was confident about his chances. Felt like the car turned real good around this racetrack. Right now, he's got a former winner in the high banks and the championship leader to his inside. And don't look now, but here comes Greg Proud and Dave Oblinas. Somerville got a mirror full of McKinnon as he's right on his bumper. That allows Ashton Tucker to close in a little bit to put a blanket over the top three. McKinnon's looking under Somerville, trying to protect the bottom. Somerville will lead this lap, but he's got some serious company in his rearview mirror. Darren McKinnon all over the pumps, drive through bottle exchange. Doherty and Fullerton, number 23, Lonnie Somerville up front, enjoying the view he's got out front, but not the one in his rear view mirror. McKinnon is making it tough for him. Look out, heavy contact. Dustin Tucker in the 52, hard into the 81 of Ian Rasmussen. Chris Hughes involved in that. The 01 of Troy Burke as well has driven away from the scene, but heavy damage to the 52. Enjoying the view he's got out front, but so not the, the one in his rear view Stinson, mirror. Uh, McKinnon three, is making it. And he collected Tucker, no place to go. So Dustin Tucker got connected up in it. But it was the 81 losing traction, going into turn three, getting sideways. And a sad day for Dustin Tucker. He really kind of stepped on them that day and showed that he was not to be messed with. And you know what? Today's a busy day for him. He's got the sportsman car here as well to run. He does, and we got a lot of smoke, Jesse, coming off this car right here, the four car. So I don't know if they've blown up that uh, thing or the uh, rear end's gone in it, but it uh, almost looks out like from the smoke's coming out under the hood. Yeah, Kent Vincent, I think, is going to be done for the afternoon, unfortunately. Um, blowing up under caution. These things happen. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate, but if it was going to happen, it's better to happen under caution than dump a whole bunch of oil down and take out another six or seven cars. So I know they put a lot of effort in this for the Mike Stevens race to have Kent in it. And uh, I was talking to Kent earlier. Uh, Kent's always been a Dodge man, you know, so it's kind of nice to see him driving a Chevy. Yeah, I'm sure it's a little different for him, but, you know, Kent Vincent is uh, no stranger to, to Petty International Raceway. He's had some great runs here in the past. Uh, his former car is now the 28 of Tant Woolridge. Uh, Tanton's behind the wheel. They had some problems earlier in the day with the uh, uh, drive shaft trailing arm. Yeah, that happens. Uh, they're made of aluminum and just very light, and uh, he got a little bump in the wheel, so it's not, it doesn't take a lot to break these off and track bar. We've seen it throughout. You take a hit direct on the wheel, and these things snap off pretty easy. It, it happened to him at Oyster Bed Speedway earlier in the year with that 28 car. Yes, the track bar. And that time it was the track bar, so I don't know today if it was the track bar or the yeah, trailing arm. I got a message from Trevor Lamb. He says, uh, drive shaft and trailing arm in the heat, but they are ready for the feature. Obviously, that was a little bit ago, and uh, we'll see how the 28 does here today. It's always better to have your trouble in the heat races, not in the big feature, that's for sure. A lot of smoke still over in the pit from that four car, Jesse, so I'd be anxious to see what the, what the deal was, whether it was fire or it was actually engine motor oil. Well, if you see a purple driver's suit up against the fence in about five minutes' time, I'm, I imagine you'll know that they're done for the day. So we're running under caution here, nine laps in the books. Uh, Checking the track to make sure there's no oil put down from the four car uh, that you did see go up in smoke. So they have to take that precaution to make sure we don't tear up some other race cars here. Uh, the first caution, uh, the 81 involved, the 52 Dustin Tucker getting collected in it. A lot of front end damage to that. I don't know if it was any, if it was cosmetic or if there was some control arms uh, bent up in the front. Uh, we haven't seen the 52 return to the track. So I'd have to think they have some suspension issues, maybe. Uh, I'm sure Sean will let me know over in the pits, or Darcy, or somebody will, will relay the message to me and let me know. Uh, uh, I know the 81 pulled off as well. Uh, he's been in and out a couple of times, but he did just pull off. So I don't know if Ian Rasmussen is going to come back out. So the cars uh, have picked their lane, Jesse, I think. Uh, have they done the chose rule so far? And... Uh, we're lined up here. It looks like we're going to go next time by. Uh, 
Flagman Craig Weagle is uh, getting his green flag out to wave it to set these guys off again for some more exciting action. So the top 10 at the moment is Lonnie Somerville in the 23. The 18 of Darren McKinnon to his outside. The two of Ashton Tucker. The four of Robbie McEwen. Or the 40 of Robbie McEwen, rather. The 10C of Brady Creamer. The one is Ryan Messer. The 54 is Jarrett Butcher. The 16 of Dylan Gosby in that new McCall car. He is eighth. Chris Duncan in position number nine. Great run for him so far. And the 83 of Corey Hall up to the top 10. Corey had to start no better than 50% of the field. So today it was a 13th place starting finish as the previous winner of our last event. Yes, that's true. And that's a rule of the series. Uh, so that fell into place today. There's another car wanting to come out of here. Jesse, uh, they're going to go green here this time by. Looks like the 81 of Ian Rasmussen trying to come back out. Green flag back in the air, and we are racing. So Somerville gets a big jump on the start. Darren McKinnon follows him through. Ashton Tucker's there. Up on the outside, McEwen is trying to get some headway made on the outside, but he'll tuck in here probably behind Ashton Tucker as the top four goes single file down the backstretch. Robbie McEwen hasn't even been on the podium at all this season in these events, but... Right now, he sits second in points. Going to be a great drive here today, but he wants a little bit of hardware before the Super Late Model Series comes to a close. Robbie McEwen definitely not out of it. He has a good day, and Gosby has a bad day, and you don't know what will happen. 150 laps, a long time, so McEwen running up in the fourth spot, and we look at the guy that took the pole challenge, the 32. He's making his way through the field pretty good too, Jess. Chris Hughes works his way under Greg Fay in behind Kevin Moore. A 48 and the 85 do battle. Longtime fans in New Brunswick will know those two numbers, Oblinas and McKenzie. They've had a number of duels over the last 10, 20, 30 years in New Brunswick. So a little tap from McKinnon on Somerville down in turn two. Tucker sitting back looking to see what's going to happen, but Big Orange is in the picture. He's rolled up to fifth. Brady Creamer sits back in six, and Devin Snell, not, or Butcher, has worked his way up, trying to get underneath the 10 of Brady Creamer. Jared Butcher in the 54, he's had a great run all season long with the East Coast International Pro Stock Tour. Second in points, picked up a winner too in that 54. His brother, winner of the Red Bud 400 at Anderson Speedway this season, Cole Butcher, has been lighting it up, and Jared wants some hardware of his own on the high banks. And he's be followed by your points leader, Gosby, right on his bumper. As Butcher makes the way, Gosby wants to follow him through. So Gosby coming through the field comfortably also. Try to single in behind Butcher there, and they'll be single foul. But up front, it's Somerville. Continues to lead McKinnon and Ashton Tucker. Brady Creamer putting up a smart drive. Drops in line, in behind Gosby, just ahead of Corey Hall. He knows his fight is not with that 16 car here today. The 83 is coming through in a hurry, and Corey Hall wants another position as he looks at eighth under the 10C. So the leaders will soon catch up to a couple of lap cars as the top three are running bumper to bumper. Little break back to McEwen. Big Orange sits in fifth. Jarrett sits back in sixth. He's got some company now. Gosby's looking to try to get around him to get up in this front field. But Corey Hall is closing in quick, so Gosby wants to move. We don't have timing and scoring right in front of us, but I would imagine that 16 of Dylan Gosby is one of the fastest cars on the racetrack. He was second quick Jesse in practice, so for a brand new race car, uh, that's a pretty good hot rod. And it was out of the McCall shop in Ontario where that chassis comes from. Ashton Tucker's had enough. He pulls it to the outside. He wants to go by McKinnon. Ashton Tucker's going to make a run to the front early here, and he'll go by McKinnon, and McKinnon will let him have the spot. Nearly a winner at Speedway 660. Ashton Tucker wants to dispatch of Darren McKinnon and wants to do it in a hurry. Lonnie Somerville continues to lead up front. 26 laps in the books, and we've still got about 124 left to go. Ashton Tucker, no slouch here at Petty. He's been up front before, hasn't won in this series, but he's been there. He's won some other big races. They've had a great season. 
That's a brand new race car from King Racing. Ian Rasmussen and Allison McKinnon having a bit of a battle just ahead of the leaders. They are going to have to sort it out. And McKinnon, I think he's going to let Rasmussen go. And now he'll have to worry about the 23 of Lonnie Somerville. Somerville will roll the outside. And the Oyster Red driver is now going to go down a lap. Somerville followed through by Ashton Tucker. They clear him. McKinnon follows through. McKuna go up the outside. The seven keeps it down low on the racetrack to give room for the leaders to go. Very gentleman move of him. And the top ten leaders get by with no issues. Lead up front is about to change. Ashton Tucker gets the nose out in front of the Doherty and Fullerton. Maple syrup number 23. New leader Ashton Tucker. 30 laps in, 120 to go. Tucker in a hurry, gets up front, wants that clear traffic, but he's about to be in a bunch of a lap, Hornets Nessa lap cars. He's gonna lap Raz Usman here on the front stretch and about four more cars ahead of him to be lapped. So it's single file, Somerville settles in the second, McKinnon third, McCune sitting back fourth, and Big Orange runs out the top five. As drivers roll the outside on lap traffic, we look a little bit further back Greg Proud is on the move in the Atlantic Dodge, Dealers Dodge, running with the devil this season. The 29 car picked up a win at Oyster Red Speedway, and today he knows the outside is the place to be. Rolls around Chris Duncan and makes it easy, and he will dispatch of the former track champion. One car who's been off the pace a little bit, just as the 48 of Dave Oblinas running back there. I don't know if something's up. Upset that car, he's totally loose coming off turn four. So you may see him duck to the pit when the next caution comes for some adjustments. The crew told me just before the race, they made a pile of adjustments right before the feature to this race car, and I don't know if they're going to be the ones to work out. Well, it looks like the, the Oblina's not liking the adjustments as he's off the pace in the back of the field. Meanwhile, up front, Ashton Tucker setting a torrid place but Somerville's staying right with him. There's a car length or two between Somerville, McKinnon, McCune, and of course, Big Orange. Now the Jared Butcher's looking, trying to get around the outside of Big Orange. Jared Butcher's had a couple of big slides in that 54 car as he works on the one of Ryan Messer. Messer holds his own in fifth at the moment, but just in behind them, Corey Hall is on the move. Dylan Gosby has been maybe a little bit stagnated in his pursuit to the front of the field, but the 83 is continuing forward, and Corey Hall wants to be a three-time winner this season. So Gosby has followed uh, Corey Hall by the 10 C of Creamer as they make their way up front. Ashton Tucker in heavy lap traffic, but he seems to be getting through it no problem at all. And there's about a hornet's nest about to come. There's about six, seven cars ahead of the leaders here that they'll soon all be in lap traffic here in a couple laps. Greg Fay having a bit of a tough day in car number 20, the seven time track champion at Speedway 660 is about to go down a lap, but you know what? Petty International Raceway has never been his strong suit in any race car that he's brought here. He's never really been that strong. Um, so unfortunately he'll probably go down a lap here in a moment. Raz Usman in the 81 takes it to the pit. Uh, so obviously something's off with that race car. Fahey's head prairie done figured out, Jess. He's been a rocket there, but this new race car the last year or so, he hasn't been as competitive as he was. He's good for about a mid-pack run, but hasn't broke through to the top 10. And uh, not to discredit Greg Fay at all, he is a, a master wheelman when he drives these race cars. But, you know, today he is just having an off day and not having an off day is Darren McKinnon as he continues to work over the 23, but lap traffic is making it difficult. And the thing with Darren McKinnon, he never really shows you anything early. He's a guy that hangs around, hangs around, and the last 30 laps, you really see what he's got under that race car. Contact, Ryan Messer into the back of Kevin Moore, and Kevin Moore is going to slide to a stop. No contact with the outside wall, just trading a little bit of paint, but that is uh, not going to be what... I was what quite busy last year with my snowmobile rental business, so 
I said, how much did it cost? And he told me, and I said, you know what, I'll just sponsor it. So make sure we look good. So uh, I put up the money to buy them, and they certainly uh, do look uh, good and looks professional for the tour. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Uh, we've got some other sponsors as well. Doherty Right-of-Way Services, Clam Diggers Restaurant and Beach House, uh, Brightcon Construction, Fox City Auto Spa, Riverview Forward, some of the event sponsors. Of course, Old Fashioned Meat Market here today. Uh, King Competition, AFCO, GD Fabrication, Port City Race Cars, Penske Racing Shocks, Five Star Race Car Bodies, AR Bodies, CRF, Swift Springs, Hyperco, EIT Race Radios, Brent Rowley does a lot of work for racing in the Maritimes and putting up $150 to each pole sitter at each event. Uh, Kenny McKenzie Jr. coming away with that here today. Yeah, and that's nice just because that's a small race team, so 150 bucks means a lot to them. And by having that award, it gives all different guys an opportunity to win it. So it's nice to see that kind of money be spread around. And Brent does a great job with the... Uh, radios and all the radio hardware and people rent scanners from them to listen to what their favorite driver saying so he's a big part of the sport of course big thanks goes out to the folks at uh, heinz paving recar wonder auto and tire and all the other sponsors that have been a part of the super late model series here in 2023 46 laps complete 104 left to go the old-fashioned meat market 150 gonna go back to green green flag back in the air so it's Ashton Tucker up front, Somerville trying to get around them. They go side by side down the back stretch. Here comes Robbie McEwen on the outside, looking to fall Summer through through. Somerville hanging tough on the outside. They'll go at it down the back stretch. Somerville with a little bit of edge on the back, but Tucker will hold the bottom line. Lonnie well, Somerville deciding this is go time, wants to wrestle away that lead away from a team he used to drive for once upon a time. Robbie McKibben is there. Here comes Corey Hall. Corey Hall to the front of the field. He is looking at a podium right now, working over Robbie McEwen in the 40. So Somerville will take the lead. Ashton Tucker settles in second. Corey Hall up on the high side. He's coming through like a freight train. He'll look that bump back bumper, Ashton Tucker. He'll want that third spot. Tucker shuts the door. All the Dodge fans here today, something to cheer for. Greg Proud is on the move, working on the 18 car, and Darren McKinnon is gonna be in a fight for his life with the 29, and Proud knocks on the door of the fifth spot, up the racetrack, saves it. Jared Butcher had to get out of it. Now Ashton Tucker looking at the high side. He's seen Corey Hall coming, decided he needs to make tracks now. So he'll stick it up on the outside, try to get around the outside of Somerville. Down the back stretch, side by side. Give the advantage a little bit to Ashton Tucker. When they come off back to the line, Ashton Tucker will lead that lap. Somerville doing everything he can to hold on to the top spot. It's not going to be enough. Ashton Tucker back to the front of the field. Corey Hall from 13th on the grid, up to second. 55 laps in, 95 to go. So Corey Hall looking to go around the outside of Somerville, he will. He sets a sight on Ashton Tucker. These two have been at it before. Not always ending up good as Corey Hall got into Ashton Tucker and Freire didn't roughed him up a little bit for the win. So does Ashton Tucker still remember that? And oh, not give him a lot of room? They have not forgotten that one iota. Top two, the Fury Brigade as they work towards the front of the field. Lonnie Somerville back to third, Robbie McEwen fourth, and just wants to be on the podium at least once this season. The 40 car is having a great run so far. Darren McKinnon is busy now with the 29 of Greg Proud, and Proud can't make that outside pass on him. Proud came from deep in the field also, so the two PEI drivers know each other well. They've gone at it before. But Jared Butcher's lurching in the back bumper of the 29, waiting for him to make a mistake to go under him. The Butcher family has had big success this season with the Super Late Model Series, the East Coast International Pro Stock Tour, the CRA Super Series, the Southern Super Series, AISA Stars National Tour Racing. 
with Cole down south driving for Donnie Wilson, but today it's Jarrett's day to shine, and the Atlantic Tilt Load Chevrolet is trying to get by the 29, but can't seem to do so. So Ashton Tucker running the high side, letting Corey Hall have the bottom, but he can't get the grip up off the bottom, and Tucker knows that. So he's put the number two white lightning up on the top side and said, go to the bottom, Corey, if you think you can. You think back to, oh, about six weeks ago now, Corey Hall and Ashton Tucker wailed on each other for the race win at Speedway 660. In the recar 150 presented by Wonder Auto and Tire, Corey Hall came out on top in that one and was met with a shower of booze. And he was not the favorite that night, but this is his home racetrack. He's won here before, and he wants to get it out from underneath of the two of Ashton Tucker. And the interesting thing is, Corey Hall works at the race shop that builds Ashton Tucker's race car, Jesse. So you got to think customer here also. Uh, that's your day job. That's your paycheck. But I'm certainly that the two of Ashton Tucker has not forgot what took place at Speedway 660. <sighs> Robbie McEwen and Lonnie Somerville, drivers who have had a couple of run-ins in previous seasons here on the high banks of Petty Raceway. Robbie McEwen tries the inside on Somerville. Somerville holds his own for third at the moment, and McKinnon has stepped up and stepped out and gotten away from the 29 of Greg Proud. The top five all under a blanket. Allison McKinnon in danger of being down a lap once again. 68 laps in the books with about 82 left to go. And they're setting a toward piece up front. Single foul, lap and Allison McKinnon. Darren McKinnon picked up the pace when he saw the dodge coming. Greg Proud, it's just like he was coasting, Jesse. And we've seen him do this before and never really show what he's got until 20 or 30 to go. It might be a, short, a smart strategy. He's letting the rest of the field figure out what lane they're good in. So if we do have a caution, they might all pick the bottom or the top and he can move up a couple of positions. But for right now, he's got a mirror full of the Atlantic Tilt Load Chevrolet. And I watched him in practice. He can run right around the bottom of that white line. No problem at all, Jess. So he's trying to go under Robbie McEwen right now to take away that four spot. Just not abusing the race car and doing so. Darren McKinnon almost up into the side of the 40 of Robbie McEwen. McKinnon will slide back into line. And Brad Ken Vincent is way off the pace with that four car. He is, Jess, but there's no smoke, but something's going to miss, and we may see him pull up and take it to the pit here shortly. But uh, indeed he does. Ken Vincent is headed to pit road. Tough break for the all-time starts leader for the East Coast International Pro Stock Tour, Ken Vincent, off to the pit area. Hopefully we see him back in a race car in 2024. Well, the idea was to have him do this race to get ready for the Mike Stevens, so... I'm sure Wayne and the crew will get out that car and get it ready for that race. Meanwhile, up front, Ashton Tucker continues to lead Corey Hall. Somerville sitting in third. Great run for him here today. Robbie McEwen back and forth. Darren McKinnon sitting in fifth. And now Proud has fell off the pace a little bit, and Jared Butcher has got around the 29 car, and he's being followed by Gosby. Great run for Brady Creamer in the 10C, inside the top 10. I, I'm, I imagine at the beginning of the day, he didn't think he'd be battling with Greg Proud and Dylan Gosby, but you know what? That 10C is stout here today, and Dwayne McKay has brought a good piece past the halfway point now. 78 laps complete and 72 left to go. And Brady Creamer, no slouch behind the wheel either. He's a good wheel man. So it looks like Oblinas and... Big Orange doing a little bit of battle. These guys aren't no strangers as that was the battle for the 250 win. And Oblina's used them up a little bit, but like he said, you're going for 15,000. It is what it is with a couple to go. Messer wasn't afraid to trade a little paint either. They knew what they were doing with those race cars, but now, you know, they're racing the middle of the pack. They're just trying to have a race with one another and salvage what they can. Our pole challenge recipient, Chris Hughes, has gone down a lap in the 32 car. Indeed he has. Tucker gets around him. Now Corey Hall looks around him. 
Uh, Somerville's fell back a little ways, but he's got three or four lap cars in front of him. McCune and McKinnon continue to go at it for that fourth spot. Somerville's probably banking on the fact that McEwen and McKinnon will tire each other out in that battle in behind them, but the laps are clicking off at a torrid pace, and if Lonnie Somerville's got anything for the top two, he's got to start showing it in the next probably 25 laps or so. Well, he can save it a little bit, Jesse, as long as he can keep that distance away that he doesn't have to race the 40 car in McEwen and Darren McKinnon, but they're in heavy lap traffic here, so be anxious to see after they clear the lap traffic. But Corey Hall is stuck to the bumper, Ashton Tucker. Allison McKinnon back down another lap as well. 65 laps left to go in the old fashioned meat market, 150. It's been all Ashton Tucker for probably the last 40 laps of this one. And Corey Hall now trying to dive to the inside and the 83 car has to fall back in the line, can't make the pass happen. Tanton Woolridge is next on the list. So Ashton Tucker's been given the 83 Corey Hall the bottom, a little harder to get up off the bottom here than the outside. So the preferred lane, if you can stay up there, is the top. So obviously Ashton's been being smart about it, staying up on the high side a little easier on the tires. And if Corey Hall wants to try the bottom, let him have it. I would say those two cars are pretty close, Jess. Dave Oblinas, all kinds of sideways. Coming off turn two that time, he'll fall back a couple of positions. I'm sure the 48 crew is going to be disappointed with their efforts here today, but it's not going to be for a lack of trying. You, you know, when the car's not working right, you got to try something. And today, so far, it hasn't worked out for the Burger King Chevy. Well, he wasn't up in the points, Jess, so... In defense for them, it's a good day to test a new setup. I'm certainly know the 48 wants to be strong for Mike Stevens. So there's a good little bit of research and development here today for that team. Nearly a winner at Oyster Bed Speedway until a flat tire took him out and he drove through the field to come back to seventh on that Sunday afternoon on a Brunswick Day weekend. But the uh, 48 right now, he's in danger of going down a lap. The 97 of Chris Duncan about to go down a lap as well. Under 60 left to go, Brad. What a pace the field set in Jess. Uh, Ashton Tucker, Corey Hall, just flawless. Like them race cars, not upset at all. Going through the lap cars, making it look easy here on uh, this beautiful afternoon at River at Petty Speedway. Chris Duncan is going to go down a lap in the 97. The 2014 track champion will fall in behind of Corey Hall. And I think Duncan today, earlier in the day, kind of knew what race car he had. He knew maybe it wasn't a front-running contender, but I'm sure he thought it was going to be a little better than this. Well, they've done a lot of work in the last couple of weeks after that big accident at Speedway 660. But uh, that's a small budget team also. And they literally had to replace every chassis part on the front of that race car. And sometimes you don't get it back just right. And, you know, it would cost money, but you almost got to take the car and get it back to the builder, put it on a jig to make sure the pickup points are all right on the race car. Darren McKinnon continues his pursuit under the 40 of Robbie McEwen. They fill up the mirrors of the 23 of Lonnie Somerville. The spotters will be busy on the McKinnon and McEwen entries. And Somerville is going to have a busy radio as well. He wants to know what those two are doing in behind him. So Ashton Tucker puts the Burger King car. Oblin is a lap down. So Tucker's got Oblin is between him and Corey Hall. That Oblin is car is also a Fury car. So all three of those race cars out of the same shop. Um... Well, it gives the breathing room a little bit to Ashton Tucker up front, but Somerville's got his hands full as these two from the island are hot on his bu rear bumper. 100 laps complete, 50 left to go in the old-fashioned meat market, 150, round number six for the Super Late Model Series. Ashton Tucker has put a gap between himself and Corey Hall. It's now about... Four car lengths between the first and second place cars. The 43 of Hudson Weston is about to go down a lap as well. He's had a stellar uh, rookie season with this race car. A former championship car with...
Ryan Alexander behind the wheel last season, and Hudson Weston has been great all season long, but right now he is about to go down a lap as Greg Proud has just done so in the 29. Yeah, Greg Proud, that's a top running car going down a lap here to Ashton Tucker. So now you put Proud between Tucker and Corey Hall, but these guys up front are setting a torrid pace with 103 laps in the books coming quickly to 47 to go here at the last race of the SLMS series. We talked pre-race, uh, oh, 97 car, Chris Duncan off the pace. He'll head off to the pit area. It looks like something has let go in the Easy Clean Pressure Systems Auto Body Plus Chevrolet. Uh, to get back to the point, the 20 of Greg Fay, we talked about him having an off day. You know what? He's having his first top 10 run of the season. So it's not all bad for the 20 crew. No, we look at that sometimes, Jesse, and the leaders are setting a, a terror pace, and we, we think somebody's having an off day, but like you said, he's having a top 10. That would be a good day for him because he's had a rough summer. Yeah, I retract my statement a little bit about having a rough day. You know what? He's having an okay day. It's It's been upgraded a little bit. Uh, driver maybe not having an okay day is Lonnie Somerville. He continues to get pressure from the 40 and the 18. At what point do the 40 and the 18 just say enough's enough and dispatch of the 23 car? Well, I think it'll happen in lap traffic, Jesse. Uh, there's like four cars coming up ahead of them here, and sometimes you get pinched in the wrong lane, but uh, Somerville certainly has his hands full. Looks like the handling's gone away in that race car. Looks like it's developed a push in it, so it's kind of got to wash up the racetrack a little bit in the turn, so... Once these guys get clear of the lap traffic, uh, the bottom would be pretty free to them. Brad, how often do we say this? 111 laps in the books, and Ryan Messer has just gone down a lap. You don't see that very often. So Not honestly, at all. Maybe he did some damage up there when he did get into the 81 that we didn't see, but something's off on that race car. Yeah, he had some contact with Kevin Moore earlier, and I think the one of Ryan Messer, they just want to bring the car home now, and have it ready for the Mike Stevens Memorial uh, in one week's time. Hudson Weston getting shoved up the racetrack a little bit by Corey Hall. He'll drop in behind the 83 car, but Ashton Tucker is taking no prisoners here today. Has three lap cars between himself and Corey Hall. He's created a buffer, and he likes what he sees. How often, though, has that two car been sailing away, and a late caution comes, and he's had it taken from him. I'm sure Ashton Tucker's trying to put his much distance as he can because he knows what Corey Hall has but it's really never over till it's over and I've watched him have a big lead and then lose it with five to go and have a restart and have it taken away from him just two cautions have slowed the old-fashioned meat market 150 on laps in 9 and 45 respectively but it has been clean and green since the last caution 116 in the books and Ashton Tucker about to, well, he's lapped inside the top 10 now. So uh, Ryan Messer inside the top 10 at the moment. Devin Snell, I think, way up the racetrack. He had to have a, a good save of that race car. And uh, the biggest race on the racetracks, third, fourth, and fifth, as they've been going at it just getting through lap traffic. Now there's some open racetrack. It'll be interesting to see what McCune and McKinnon can do with the 23. But the 23's been running up on the high side. If they're going to do something, they're going to have to go underneath them. McEwen and Summer found themselves on the front row of a Mike Stevens Memorial a number of seasons ago and ended up down through the infield. I'm sure they want to keep the distance with one another, but put the pressure on one another as well. Darren McKinnon rolls the inside, but can't gain any ground on the Sherwood and Barnesville drivers. So meanwhile, Ashton Tucker on a cruise here. Corey Hall about seven car lengths back. Ryan Messer between the two of them. That's what's going on up front. Back in the third, fourth spot. There's a little competition going on big time. McCune has been on the back bumper, that 23. How long does he stay there before he moves them? Uh, we're getting down uh, under 30 laps to go here, Jess. Championship update, Dylan Gosby is seventh on the racetrack, continues to hound the 54 of Jarrett Butcher. 
as they navigate some lap traffic. But right now, all Dylan Gosby needs to do is bring the thing home in one piece, and he will be the Super Late Model Series champion. Yeah, and he's, don't worry, Jesse. He's got that on his mind. He's been safe all afternoon. Uh, brand new race car. Uh, impressive that it's running like it is. But he hasn't taken any chances at all. Lots of room when he's passing lap cars. He knows what's on the line here for the 16 team this afternoon. <laughs> all top 10 runs all season long for that 16 including a win at Oyster Bed Speedway a number of events ago. But right now, he's got that big trophy in his mind. He's got the championship in mind. The Rookie of the Year battle is another good battle as well. Kenny McKenzie Jr. seems to have that pretty well locked up, but uh, never say never in this one. 24 laps left to go. Ashton Tucker rolling up on the back bumper of Devin Snell. Snell running the high side. So that's going to cost Tucker some time as they're going through the lap track. But Corey Hall is about six car lengths back. But this will give the opportunity for Corey Hall to close up the gap on the leader. Devin Snell continues to run that outside. He's going to get around the 94 of Ryan Reigns, the 07 of Alex and McKinnon. And the two is on the back bumper of the 10 car. Devin Snell has had a bit of a winless streak with that car for a couple of seasons. I'm sure he'd love to return to victory lane. Doesn't look like today is going to be the day. This time across the stripe for Ashton Tucker. 130 complete and 20 to go. Tucker tried to go underneath him, got extremely loose off of four. But we watched that two car run along the bottom early in the going, but Snell will not wanting to give up this easy. And what that's doing is letting Corey Hall gain some of the pace. But it looks like Ashton Tucker will get the pass made this time by and set his sights on Kenny McKenzie Jr. Your pole setter this afternoon, Kenny McKenzie Jr. in the 85 sees a miracle, the White Lightning Auto Center Chevrolet. And the 85 will stick to the inside and Tucker rolls by in the two car. Tanton Woolridge next on the list once again to go another lap down. He's had a couple of big slides. He has indeed. He's had his hands full all afternoon doing double duty here. We saw him in the legend car come up with a podium finish. So obviously his day was going to be better in that than what it's going to be in his late model car. Dave Oblinas and Brady Creamer having a great battle. They might run out of laps before the leader gets to them. But overall, those drivers have won a lot here at Petty International Raceway, and they know how to get around here. 15 to go as Tucker rolled by with a comfortable lead. The next car up is Woolridge, the 28, which he'll lap. Ahead of that, he's got a clear racetrack until Dave Oblinas. So with 14 to go, it's Tucker leading this field with a dominant performance here this afternoon at Petty Speedway. Trevor Lamb will net his driver know that the leader has gone by. And Woolrich will fall back into line behind the two and run his race for the moment. 13 laps left to go. It's going to be 12 to go this time. What a pace we have seen here in the back half of this one. 105 lap run to the checkers, possibly shaping up. And the drivers have spaced themselves out enough that I think that's what we're going to see. Brad, the battle continues to heat up. McKinnon, he had a moment there with the 40, and the 40 had a moment with the 23. They have not left each other alone all race long. No, and they've got a ton of lap cars in front of them, so the lap cars could dictate what happens here as Weston's running up high on the outside. McKinnon trying to get under the 40 of McCune. Meanwhile, Summers on the back bumper of Weston. 140 complete, 10 to go. Going to be 9 to go this time. Troy Burke down a lap in the 01 car. And Ashton Tucker has set sail in this race and wants to put a check mark on his season. A winner at Scotia Speed World a week ago in the uh, East Coast International Pro Stock Tour. But he wants a Super Late Model Series win. He knows the competition is here. He knows how much this will mean if he can outdrive the rest of the field and come away with the win today. So it's Somerville looking to get around the outside of Weston. Robbie McEwen tries to get under him. 
nothing doing there. They got by. Somerville will get around the outside of Western. McCune is following him. Hot on his bumpers, the 18 of McKinnon. The battle for third heats up, Jess. It has been hot all race long. The 23 of Somerville going to get around the 85 of Kenny McKenzie Jr. They started on the front row together, and I think that's maybe the third time he's gotten by the 85. The 40 of Robbie McEwen, the 18 of Darren McKinnon. This has been the battle on track all race long. This time across the stripe. Four laps left to go for Ashton Tucker. And Warwick is in the front wall. The 28 hits the wall, but it looks like he's going to go to the pit. He got into the front stretch wall, Jess. Tant Woolridge going to call it an afternoon just shy of the finish. Three laps left to go. Brad, we're coming down to the end of this one, down the back stretch. This time by Craig Weagle. Popsicle sticks in the air. He's going to give him two to go. Ashton Tucker is on his way to a super late model series win. Now it's Somerville back in the third spot. McEwen trying hard to get under him with two to go. That's been a hot battle all along. Somerville will stick it up outside. Looks like no lap cars will be involved in that. Down the back stretch one final time. He has stepped up and stepped out from the competition. Three times the winner in the 250 at 660. Now a winner with a Super Late Model Series. Ashton Tucker wins the old fashioned market 150. Corey Hall comes home second. Lonnie Somerville gonna come home third. Photo finish, Robbie McEwen. Over the 18 of Darren McKinnon, we will head down trackside. What a finish here. What a run for the 23 of Somerville after having hard luck all summer. Four motors later, he gets a podium. How about Ashton Tucker finally getting a win here on the late model series, his first of the summer. As he's been in this position before and has had it taken away with him from a few laps to go. Corey Hall settles into the second position. So the two car, the Miramichi, Ashton Tucker, very happy with his afternoon. And certainly I know Somerville's uh, had a tough summer. Great run for Lonnie Somerville and uh, pretty good top three here, Jess. So I'll pass it down to you. It's been a great afternoon of racing. There's still some racing left here, folks. So it doesn't get a lot better than this, Jess. He's made his way to the finish line. All season long, all he's wanted is a win with the Super Late Model Series. Driver number two, no stranger to victory lane at any racetrack in Atlantic Canada. Going to be a big celebration here in a few moments. Corey Hall comes over to congratulate him. Smiles from the both of them, they like that. He's gonna climb on out of the race car, your old fashioned meat market 150 winner is Ashton Tucker. Ashton, buddy, that looked tiring out there. How was that behind the wheel of the two car? It was, uh, it was a rocket ship here today. Yeah, to be honest, after third practice and the heat races, I, I didn't know if we could get a top five here today. We struggled pretty bad there. But I, I don't know in the future if everyone else just struggled bad, but I didn't feel we were that great, but it's kind of like a Sunday drive out front there. You guys have had a, a good season, but you've also had some low points as well, some, uh, some cars that really needed to be uh, replaced. And uh, this car is a rocket ship here today. The two car was, was on rails all race long. Yeah, no, we've been really good everywhere this year and fast. Just we had a lot of bad luck this summer and just cool to get a win here and get some momentum going for Mike Stevens. We know some things we need to change and be better at for next weekend. We definitely wouldn't have a winning car with this thing next weekend, but we'll get her better and we'll see if we can't get another one. Well, how much was lap traffic? 105 lap run to the checkers, a, a factor in this one of keeping cool and, and you know, trusting in your crew that, that they gave you a good piece. Yeah, the lap traffic might help a little bit, but the long green flag runs, I feel, really help us. We, we're good at saving our stuff, and I feel like that's our strong suit, the long runs, and 
Uh, I never had a green flag run that long in a while, so that was an awesome way to end the race. Who gets the thanks here today on car number two? Uh, Brad and all the crew, we, I don't know, we were all pretty, we were throwing some dirty names at this thing there after practice, we weren't happy, but all them, sponsors, uh, they're a great help. King Competition, Corey and them, they the ones who put this piece together, and it's been working out pretty good for us. I imagine Mike's Bar Grill is going to be a pretty good party spot here for this two crew. That might be a half decent spot to go there later tonight and have a cup of beer. Well, that's Ashton Tucker, your winner, round number six with the Super Late Model Series. Second place finish here today, but not without effort. Let's hear it for the 83 of Corey Hall. Corey, a great drive here to, to come from 13th on the grid to start deep in this field. You, you had no problems getting up to the front of the field, but that two car was stout. and uh, I, I think it was just even uh, equipment here for these guys. Well, it was, uh, it's good for King Competition to have the two of us one, too. Uh, we've been on a pretty good roll here in the uh, shop, and I think everybody kind of knew once, once Ashton got one of our cars, it was going to be, uh, it was going to be him and Brad dominating a lot of these races. So you can expect that and, uh, kind of came here with something pretty significantly different than what we normally run or what I won with last time. And just, just trying to get better for the Mike Stevens and, uh, just missed it this time pretty seriously. So, um, but nonetheless, congrats to them. It's awesome for the shop and, uh, Good to still come away with a P2. I didn't think that we were going to be anywhere close to that. It's just uh, the way the, the track faded and uh, nobody could get any grip at all. So, um, no, it was, uh, it was good for us. And uh, got to thank all the crew for coming out and, uh, and helping as per usual. Uh, GS Racing, King Competition, Plant Seafood, Robbie's Towing, uh, GS Plumbing, uh, Chris Fournier Remax. King Freight Lines. I'm sure I forgot somebody. How about your dad standing right over here? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, he's always on my back no matter what. So it's uh, pretty cool to to have the support of him and mom and everybody here, um, and the people that just keep coming back and helping out. It's uh, it's cool for me to uh, have people that see the vision that I have and want to help. That's Corey Hall, second place here today with the Super Late Model Series. Welcome back to the podium, driver number 23. Let's hear it for Lonnie Somerville. Lonnie, how does it feel to be back on the podium with uh, with this car and this crew? I know I see smiles all around here. They're happy to see you. You're happy to be here. I know you are. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a, a pretty crazy year for us motor-wise. And just uh, when you break motors and you can't test, you can't pra you know, practice and make the cars better, it's tough. So... Uh, we started a, a season with a third, ended with a third on the SLM, SLMS deal, and uh, just I thought we were pretty good in practice, and uh, I knew that we were all going to be chasing the two car, um, and just we're still chasing the two car, but uh, real good practice for next weekend, and that's the the one that we all got circled for the you know as a racer you look at the money you can win, and, and obviously that prestigious trophy we all want next week. So uh, 150 lap test today, and uh, we'll, we'll make it better for next week. I think your spotter deserves uh, some credit here today. You had a lot of competition in behind you. Robbie McEwen, Darren, uh, or yeah, Darren McKinnon and Robbie McEwen were in behind you and really made a tough long. Yeah, it's great. When racing those guys, you know, you don't have to worry about them getting into you or running you up or anything. So you don't even look in the mirror. You just look what's out front and uh, you know that they're going to run their line and they're not going to drive over, drive over their head and get into you. So racing with those guys, I do it all day long. Well, who gets the thanks here on car number 23 and the crew here and all the sponsors on this car? Yeah, absolutely. All my guys work really hard. We've had a, like I say, trying summer and uh, it's not done yet. We've got a couple more races to go and uh, we'll still try to get that checker flag. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, Bob, Pubs Bottle Exchange, uh, without him, I mean, we would even be doing this. This is, uh, this is all his deal and uh, he lets us have fun and, uh, and lets us spend his money and, uh, and we try to, try to perform for him. Uh, Doherty Fullerton, uh, Maple Syrup, uh, Kings County Performance, uh, Taste and Sea Restaurant in Sussex to come on board this year and uh, keep us fat on the weekends. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'm missing anybody or not, but uh, just my, you know, my family and everybody, it's, uh, it's a family sport. And uh, you know, all my crew guys aren't all related, but we're all family. And the shark, Clark Moore, you on for the grandstand. <laughs> That's Lonnie Somerville back on the podium once again with the Super Late Model Series. Three model series champion. Let's hear for Dylan Gosby. <laughs> well, 
Well, Dylan, all you had to do today was finish 15th. You, you did better than that. Finish well inside the top 10. You've had a great year all season long, top 10s all year long. You are the inaugural Super Late Model Series champion. Tell me how that feels. Uh, it's pretty surreal, man. Um, the car was feeling pretty good. And uh, it ended up over. And uh, he's, he's still there. Yeah, there you are. And anyway, we just made it to the end. I stopped to do a burnout, and the transmission was gone. So uh, we got pretty lucky. New car gremlins, but uh, it makes it all right when you get the championship trophy at the end of her. Definitely. Um, we probably made it hard. Thanks. Uh, with this crew, with the 16 car, you got two cars, and it's a busy crew, and a lot of dedicated guys that come over from Moncton, come over from the island to help you out each and every race. Way to put me on the spot and have somebody mad at me for getting them, for, for, for getting them. But yeah, there's Jody, Danny, Kent, myself, John, and here with the mic. And Gosby, it's Super Late Model Series Three. Let's hear it for him, folks. Folks, your cash roll rookie of the year as well with the Super Late Model Series. Let's hear it with the 43 of Hudson Weston. Hudson, your first year in a pro stock car. You end up second in points at Speedway 660. You end up rookie of the year with the Super Late Model Series. All Better than we could have ever imagined. Uh, we ended up doing a lot more racing than we thought we were going to this year too. Uh, we got a lot of momentum. Well, let's, uh, let's give the sponsors and the crew their thanks, just in case this mic out on us. Test one, two, there we go. Of course, my family, uh, uh, my dad, my Uncle Jeff, Uncle Bruce, Kim Phillips for helping on the crew today, Jeff Armstrong from GD Fabrication for giving us a fast car, uh, Bayview Trucks and Equipment, uh, Cummins, Nova Truck Centers, Valley Equipment, the Snell Group Realtors, Keith Wealth Management, uh, Shoreland Transport, and just everyone who helps get us to the track and make us fast. That hardware is going to look pretty good in the shop uh, later tonight. Yeah, no, we're happy we got it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Hudson Weston, your Rookie of the Year with the Super Late Model Series.